I'm pretty sure I don't need to introduce you the king of all fighting games. Everybody knows Street Fighter video game series. I don't fancy calling it a franchise, it always makes me think of McDonald's or crap like that, and this game series doesn't deserve it. For me personally, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition is the best fighting game of the series, and arguably the best 2D fighting games of all time. Since then, there's been many iterations, sequels and also movies. Some better than others, but most of the games were actually great. As it sometimes happens, however, you may find some bad apples in the bunch. On this review is about such an apple, which sort of struggles to rise to the occasion. Of course, I'm talking about the Street Fighter the movie. And I don't mean THE movie, but the game that's name is Street Fighter the movie. It's not a sequel to Street Fighter 2, it's based on the film that's based on Street Fighter 2. And the film's name is, you guessed it right, Street Fighter the movie. I grew up watching Van Damme's movies, and this one is on top of his worst movies list. Don't confuse it with another film with a similar name, Street Fighter the Animated Movie, which is actually pretty good. And now, we're about to unravel this marvelous work of art. There's some sort of unwritten rule in the film industry that a movie based on the game has to be rubbish, and unfortunately vice versa, a game based on the movie has to be rubbish as well. And now imagine a game based on the movie that's based on the game. And that's exactly what we're getting here. Utter rubbish. It was created by incredible technologies. All of their games are as incredible as you'd expect from someone who developed this game. This is an arcade version. I couldn't get my hands on PlayStation or Saturn versions, but fortunately, or rather unfortunately, I found some videos on YouTube and some information online. Despite that it looks very similar to arcade version, it's a different game, supposedly developed by Capcom, which is hard to believe. I refuse to believe that Capcom's coders would be responsible for something like that. I reckon that Capcom bought this game from incredible technologies, rebranded that, made some changes like they changed backgrounds, included movie modes, put in some short clips from the film, and that was it. When you first start the game, you immediately notice incredibly poor graphics. Game characters are based on the movie characters of course, but they are keyed out from a blue screen so bloody poorly you can see blue halos around them all the time. Characters in the game are digitized actual actors from the film, and as such, they are horrendous. Except for Zangief with his nice knickers, Bison and maybe Vega with his pitchfork, they don't resemble game characters in any way. Worst of them all is Ken. They just picked up some random bloke of the street and put him in a red kimono. Maybe there's something wrong with my eyes, no matter how much I try, I don't see any resemblance. Not only he's not blonde, his hair is shorter than everybody else's. And look at his stance, what's this supposed to be? Well, to be honest, Everyone's stance is rubbish. Everybody knows that fighting stance is there mainly for two reasons. To be able to attack and defend yourself with the least effort at the shortest possible distance. How does that work in this case? I'm not sure. At first, I wanted to say that animation sucks, but then I decided to rephrase the sentence. The animation is not bad, because there is none. The animation is virtually non-existent in this game. It's essentially just a couple of static images moving about the screen bumping to each other in a random order. Special effects for being hit are really special. Backgrounds are not utterly terrible, but they are far cry from good. Combined with masterfully keyed out characters, you're in for a treat. Since the characters are so badly keyed out, they should kinda stand out, but very poorly chosen and dumb backgrounds make them rather bland together. If you reckon that at least music is good. Nope, it's as crappy as graphics. I know that music is usually subjective, however, in this case, I'm pretty sure I am objective. Take a listen. What sounds? Sounds are bad, but what is bloody unbearable to listen to is voice acting, if you can even call it an actor. Take for example Chan Mei. Her screeching, yelling and constant screaming is so bad, I had to turn the sounds off. Other characters are not much better. 
Capcom had to redo sounds and voice acting for PlayStation version to make it less unbearable. I've established that the graphics is crap, the music is crap, the sounds are crap. Now let's have a look at the most important aspect of the game, gameplay. Maybe it's gonna save the game. Characters use the same button layout and the button combinations as in Street Fighter 2. On this is where all the similarities end. The program is so badly written, it makes it almost impossible to control the character the way you want. Animations aside, characters' moves are simply put dreadful. Everybody is as stiff as a corpse in an advanced state of decomposition. Let's take a look at some basic moves then. If you want Ken, for example, to throw a fireball, you need to do it the same way as in Street Fighter 2. Quarter of the circle from down to forward and press any punch button. Quarter of the circle from down to forward and press any punch button. But unlike the Street Fighter 2, it's pretty hard to do it right every time you need to for some reason. And a so-called Dragon Punch is even worse. He introduced some new moves, counter, interrupt and comeback. Fortunately, every time you do one of these, it lets you know on the screen what you did, otherwise you'd have no idea what just happened. Another new aspect of the game is a super move, which you can activate once you fill the second bar. First bar is a health bar of course, I don't need to explain what that is. Second bar on the other hand is filled by hitting your opponent or by using special moves. Anyway, once you've filled up the bar to the point it starts blinking and says super, you can use the super move with some button combination. Some characters also obtained new special moves. Like this came his whip choke, or then gives ability to counter fireballs. Another thing that makes it less playable is characters' recovery time. When you get your opponent on the ground, for instance with this gracefully performed move, your opponent gets up almost instantly which makes it hard to pester them a bit more without sacrificing your cover. And lastly, computer intelligence. It's certainly better than the computer intelligence in Mortal Kombat for example, but don't expect anything terrific either. All characters are kind of prone to the same lame tactics. Later in the game, throwing your opponent basically means that they either escape or come to a throw, so it's a bit counterproductive move. Escape! 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 Otherwise, it's kinda okay. I don't understand the reasoning behind creating a game based on a movie flop. It seems to me it was supposed to be a quick cash grab, which didn't go very well. They tried to shit out a half-baked product as quickly as possible, where the idea of having fun is the same as giving yourself a brain cancer. You can try to finish the game just for the loss, but you may end up hating yourself for this decision. I've already suffered enough, so I'm gonna call it a day then. It is clearly the worst fighting game I've ever played, and it really doesn't matter that the game's title contains these two magical words, Street Fighter.